And I thought Sean had to eat his words a little bit when talking about Lamar Jackson post game because of the some of the comments he made at halftime, which suggested that they want to keep Lamar in the pocket. And as teams have figured out more and more as the evolution of Lamar continues, that's not going to cut it if you want to win football games based on his development and based on what they've put around him playmaking wise. Here's Sean Payton. At halftime on the broadcast about trying to keep Lamar in the pocket. I mean, just obviously he's a terrific player, but how much harder does that get? When gets harder when he's, you know, obviously you get the holding call, you extend the coverage. So, you, um, yeah, there's going to be a number of things that when we do our meeting tomorrow and we say, all right, if we played him again next week, what would we have done differently? We have to ask ourselves those questions. Um, certainly that would be one of them. You know, we, he's too good a player. How did you feel about his composure in the pocket? Because there were some plays that maybe in the old days he would have taken off and ran and stayed in the pocket, completed the pass. I wasn't, I mean, I, we were into the game. I wasn't, I, he's, he was the offensive player of the year. I mean, you know, so I felt his composure looked pretty composed. Sean Payton there, by the way, correction. He began with the Saints in 2006. John Harbaugh two years later, of course, with the Ravens in 2008. But yeah, from the pocket, keeping Lamar in the pocket, it's, it's, it's not a winning strategy. I mean, I showed you the numbers a little while ago in terms of what this guy does. It doesn't matter. Look at him. He's perfect past the sticks. He's perfect when he lofts a ball with touch perfectly to Justice Hill. He's perfect stepping up in the pocket, evading and escaping pressure, and firing a strike to Zay Flowers, who was improvising off of his route in the end zone when he saw that Lamar was in no man's land. Lamar is just exceptional, and it's a pick-your-poison offense in Baltimore. The numbers don't tell the whole story. He didn't do anything on the ground today because he wasn't asked to do anything on the ground. Three carries for four yards. Now, is that an indication of why he missed some plays this week? John Harbaugh and company, of course, wanted to downplay it as rest, as being rest-related, his absences. But when it popped up on the injury report, it wasn't NIR, not injury-related. It was back and knee designations. Well, beside the point, he's clearly healthy enough to do what he did today. But think about it. What makes Lamar electrifying didn't even show up on tape today from a ground game standpoint. And he's, he's here to tell you, wait a second, I'm just as electrifying as a full-fledged traditional quarterback through the air. How do you like me now? I think the Broncos probably aren't liking it very much. So much so, listen to how dejected they were at the opportunity they had before the half to cash in and cut that two-touchdown lead in half. The half, you guys had a chance to be down, I think, 17-14, to 14, mm-hmm. and then next time you touch the ball, it's 31-10. to 10. Just how crucial is that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. That, uh, you know... Before half the, um, you know that penalty on a touchdown that's um, deflating for a drive, and then um, you know they hats off to them. They executed better on offense than we did, and they made plays when it mattered. And and you know they were explosive. So we got to continue to do that. And um, you know overall that you know it was one of those points in the game that sometimes doesn't go in your favor. And uh, I think we just gotta. As a as an offense, at least we got to stop the bleeding with with points sooner than we did. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what happened in the third quarter, but I'm, I believe they had probably what like a 12 minute drive, something like that. That's, at least that's what it felt like. So, you know, when you have an entire quarter taken away from you as an offense, you're you know you're like that three and out really cost you, you know, and and so that's. That's what we need to do moving forward. Is is you know when we have when our defense gives us a three now, we need to hold on to that ball, drive down, good field position, get some points, be good in the red zone. Um, so there's there's a lot of corrections we need to make here. I don't even know what happened in the third quarter. Quinn Miners, a guard for the Broncos' offensive line, <laughs> meaning I don't even know what happened because they just sucked up the clock and we're out on the field, and I was just on the sideline waiting to come back. That's what this Ravens offense does. 
it demoralizes you. They had 24 first half yards on the ground, people. They finished with 127. Okay. This was a Denver defense in terms of rankings, as we discussed on the pregame show earlier this morning, before all hell broke loose on the pregame show, I might add. But remember what we discussed? Let me make sure to pull up the right slide. We discussed where Denver's defense ranked coming in. Pretty much top 10 in all categories. Now, we also mentioned that the Ravens were going to pose a different type of challenge than they had seen to date. And I even said something as asinine as that I thought this was the best defense the Ravens had seen since week one in Kansas City. That didn't necessarily end up being the case now, did it? But look at the rankings. They're top 10 in every defensive category right now, league-wide, aside from third down defense. And they weren't that bad today against the Ravens. Um, Ravens were three for eight in third down efficiency. But what I wanted to bring up about this statistic specifically is that Denver's defense entering today, 4.4 yards per play allowed Okay, as a defense. That was first in the NFL. You want to know what the Ravens ended up averaging? 7.3 yards per play. They blew up that average of theirs. They blew it up. That's what this offense does. I mean, they're averaging over 7 yards per play this season. We're entering week 10. That's still the most by any team since at least 2000. The Broncos hadn't allowed 24 points in a game since the opening week of the season over a month ago. The Ravens had 24 points with 30 minutes to play. And I thought CBS analyst Nate Burleson, when you really look at how they did this, made a great point that speaks to just how much variety and depth and ways to beat you this Ravens offense embodies and has. It's pick your poison. Like, what does he mean by that? They have Zay Flowers who stepped up. He's looking like a true number one. We know what the running backs go- are going to do. And I say running backs plural because it's Justin not just – yeah. Justice Hill did his thing. It's not just Derrick Henry. Lamar is playing with the most composure mm-hmm. in all of the M- NFL. That's why he said they call him MB- MB3. And then I look at two tight ends. Mark Andrews had two catches today. Really didn't do, do anything. And they didn't need to. Um, Isaiah Likely, zero catches. What does that mean? If these guys – don't have to contribute, but they're still lighting you up on offense. That's who they are. Week in and week out, they can choose whoever they want to attack your specific weaknesses. Yeah. That's why the Ravens are so tough right now. And my dumbass predicted a big game for the tight ends. <laughs> I thought to myself, Denver's going to try and take away the run, which they had some success with, even though the Ravens were just throwing it through the air in the first half, just 24 rushing yards in the first, like I mentioned. And I thought to myself, with how – Stacked they are at secondary with Pat Sertan being all world and Riley Moss playing some good football for them as well as a lockdown corner. I thought, oh, this is a big game for the intermediate part of the field. Mark and Isaiah, here we go. They combined for two catches, 26 yards. Isaiah had one target. Mark had two targets and he caught both footballs, two for 26. (laughs) It's, it's, It's honestly laughable in the best of ways for the Ravens given what they offer. Given what they – we haven't even gotten to King Henry yet. 